we're going to come back to the video, but as we go through this morning, think about, uh, I want you to think about the most important part of that video. It's not the first half. It's not the second half. But it's what happened right in the middle. And the phrase that they used was, all this will come to be unless we choose to reverse it. Okay? So reverse it. Reversal, changing course, that's this morning. Okay? So keep that in mind. We're going to get back to the video in a second. Uh, but first, there's a lot of uh, pretty amazing folks in this room, a good-looking crowd. And what I understand is that you all are going to change the world. Starting start with Detroit? Yeah. So if you're going to... If you're going to change the world, then I want to make sure I'm here to see the So, while I go this morning, you got to humor me, and I get a high five from everybody. That's the perks of being a speaker. Okay? I get a high five from everybody. So, I'm going to be talking, so you got to help me with the high five. If I miss, I, 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 I'll go. <laughs> because when you guys are all changing the world, the famous on TV, then I can say, I met you. <laughs> Selfish ambitions this morning, but I'm going to take it. So, there were a few questions that they wanted me to actually talk about this morning, so I'm going to put those out of the way, and then we'll get to some, some stuff that I want to talk about. So, first questions first was, are millennials needed in Detroit? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Let's get that question out of the way real fast. The answer is yes. Millennials are needed in Detroit for a lot of reasons, but first and foremost, the folks that are making decisions about Detroit are not making decisions about tomorrow. They're making decisions about what this community is going to look like 15, 20, 25 years down the road. Most of those folks are either not going to be here at that time, or they're going to be in a place where it doesn't matter to them as much. So if they're making decisions about what this community is going to look like 20 years down the road, who's going to be living in that community? We Us. Hopefully. Yeah, we're still going to be here. So we have to be involved. That's why millennials are important. Detroit is important to all of us. We can't leave it to others. Millennials have to be engaged, all right? So question number two was, why you guys? So if we can buy the fact that millennials need to be plugged into Detroit, need to be involved in these solutions, why you all in this room? Let me do a little exercise, okay? We said the theme this morning is reversal, reverse it. So you on, on your table, you're going to create a little mini, mini train. Okay, but I want you to just take your fingers, your train's moving down the tracks, and we're reversing. We're not changing course, right? If you're walking down your table, just a little bit of nudge will change your direction. We're not talking about that. We're talking about taking that, stopping, and coming back. It's tough to come back. You gotta do this. Come on. It's not good. Can you can you backwards walk? Yeah. It's it, it, it's it's a little more difficult to back up. Seriously, try it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's kind of awkward. Come back. That's what we're going through. This is not easy stuff. Changing direction, easy, right? Little, little course of change, no problem. Anybody can do that. We're talking about stopping a train, dead in its tracks, and coming back. So why you guys are needed in this process, you in this room, is because that kind of change takes a lot of people. One person can, can bump that train off the tracks. But every single one of you needs to be at the table if we're gonna stop that train and reverse it, okay? So this takes leadership. This doesn't take just one person waking up one morning and deciding they're gonna change direction. This takes, this, takes, this takes leadership from everybody. So you in this room, not one of you, not 10 of you, you can't look around and say, well, that guy, Xavier, he's not pretty good at this. This guy's going to change the world. But we need more than Xavier changing the world, okay? That's why you all need to be in on this, every single one of you, okay? My third question. That was question two. <laughs> oh, from, oh, dude. From my, from my stakeholder funder perspective, why are millennial-driven solutions important? Ain't that a mouthful. Here's the deal. Communities need to solve their own problems. That's it. Community solutions to community problems are always better. That's not new, that's not fancy, nobody's winning awards for writing that in the Wall Street Journal, that's just reality, okay? So millennials need to solve millennial problems the same way that Detroiters need to solve Detroit problems, the same way that Guatemalans need to solve Guatemalan problems, okay? So we got issues that we're inheriting. Did you watch the video? That first half was not sounding very good. I wasn't too happy about that. We got issues, those are real. You just make this up for a poem. Those are real issues that we gotta deal with and it's going to take, sorry, I 
It's just for the camera. <laughs> so it is going to take us solving our own problems. Okay. So from a funder perspective, I buy this because I buy the fact that communities need to solve their own problems. So millennials are going to have the best solutions to millennial problems. But why is that? So if Aaron says, okay, I buy it, communities to solve their own problems, it's because they have the most to gain and the most to lose. Millennials have the most to gain if these things work. The ideas that you're bringing to the table. Um, that's either success stories or millennials. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the, one of the goals of this summit is to expose you to success stories. Well, let me tell you, I just high five probably 100 success stories. So, you heard Xavier read my bio. One thing I hate about bios is none of that stuff matters. If I say something stupid this morning, you're not going to listen to me. And if I say something smart this morning, you're going to listen to me. It doesn't matter who I am, where I came from. So, the success story thing, um, yeah, I've been fortunate to be in the right place at the right time, and things are going well. There it is. If you want to talk more, I'll be around for all morning. So, success story. I'm in, I'm in these chairs with you. I'm just with, I'm just, I'm, I'm one of you guys. I mean, literally. Literally, we can just sit and talk here. I haven't got the mic so you can hear me. This is, I am one of you doing the same stuff. You guys can make this happen. The barriers that are out there, there's barriers, I don't care whether it's, whether it's age, whether it's where you were born, doesn't matter what your resources are, there are always gonna be barriers. The age thing is just one of them, and believe me, you can get past it, I can tell you that. So question five, why did I choose to stay in Michigan? If you care about Detroit, can you stand up for a second? Really? <laughs> okay. You can sit down. <laughs> that is why I'm in Michigan. Because I care about my community as well. Okay? I worked on a statewide level, so I care about Detroit. I care about the West Side. I care about Mackinac Island. I care about the UB. All 100 people that are up there. <laughs> I care about them. Care about you. <laughs> That's why I'm in Michigan. This is my home. Nobody's going to care about my home more than me. And no one's going to care about your hometown, your city, where you live, your neighborhood, than you. I promise you. At the end of the day, this is home is where we are, is where we're going to invest. So I stayed in Michigan because I love this state. I love the Tigers. I love Mackinac Island Fudge. I love the Great Lakes. I love the University of Michigan. It is a big day for the blue. I had to wear some gear this morning. I didn't know what kind of dress and tie we were wearing, so I wore the suit coat thing. I had, to, um, I had to bring my blue gear. Big night for the base of blue tonight. Hopefully they win. They will. <laughs> <laughs> At least you stood up saying you care about Detroit. <laughs> Take that when you run. Let's get back to this video. So, there were three sides to that video. And that first, first run through, that's, that's reality. People are saying that about our generation. Environmental degradation, relationships, families not staying together, apathetic, lethargic. That, the girl who made that video wasn't making that stuff up. They're saying that about us. Lost generation, that's, that's what they're calling us. That stuff's true, unless we choose to reverse it. And as much as I believe that the first half of that video is the course that we're on, I also believe just as much, if not more, in the second half of that video. So before we hit the video again, we're gonna show it again, I wanna walk through a couple of those pieces. It says, there is hope. And there is hope. There is so much momentum and movement in this city right now, much of it generated by millennials, but there is hope for this community. I promise you that. You guys all know that. You wouldn't be in this room at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning if you didn't believe that. So there is hope. It is foolish to presume that my generation will be apathetic and lethargic. I'll tell you, millennials don't accept the status quo. At least not the millennials I know. The status quo is not good enough. I don't care where you are, where you come from, what you're involved in. Who here believes the status quo is not good enough? I hope so. You're pitching an idea to try to improve the status quo. You're not going to get one of you and say, well, what we're doing is pretty good, but I'd like that 10 grand, so we'll go with it. No. <laughs> we have to believe that the status quo is not good enough. We cannot be complacent about that. It's not good enough to believe the status quo isn't good enough. You have to do something about it. You can't just wake up and whine and cry all day 
that, you know, oh man, woe is me, this is no good, not working. You gotta do something about it, okay? In the future, I will live in a country of my own making. Do we believe that? Yes. 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 We better. And I'll tell you right now, that's why this summit's important. Because if you're not at the table, it will not be your own making. There will be others that will be doing the making for you. Somebody will be doing the making of this community. And if you want to influence what it looks like, you've got to be involved. It's why you're here doing the project. If you want to be a part of what this community looks like twice in the road, you've got to start now. Because these changes don't happen overnight. Like I said before, you are not, you don't wake up one morning and make a, a full-on change to this community for next week. The changes of what's going to look like 20 years from now, those changes are starting now. So that's why you guys have to be involved. You can be at the table because it's long-term stuff. This is not short-term. It's another one of the phrases they said. Quick fix society. These are not quick fixes. <coughs> we like to believe there's, these are quick fixes. But change takes time. You have to go in with your project knowing you're in it for the long haul. If you go in and think that you're going to be in and out, this thing's going to be solved by next year, don't even pitch your idea tomorrow. It ain't gonna happen. You're not gonna be Facebook that wakes up with a you know 100 million followers and you're like, well, how the heck did that happen? You're not gonna be a million dollar organization three years from now. If you are, I'm really glad I gave you a high five. <laughs> Seriously, give me a little bit of credit for that. But it's not gonna happen. It's gonna be in the long run. That doesn't mean it's not important. That means you're gonna do it. You have to do it. But it's, you gotta go in it knowing it's the long haul. It's a uh, I, I can't believe I'm quoting this, but uh, I'm going to. One of our famous modern philosophers, Justin Bieber, <laughs> says, the grass is, isn't greener on the other side, it's greener where you water it. <laughs> Justin Bieber quote? <laughs> Terrible, but it's so true. <laughs> the quick fix society, the quick fix society says, the grass is greener over there. We do it with jobs, we do it with relationships, we do it with where we live. We, I know, myself included, it is always easier to say, you know what, I don't like where I work, but it sounds really good over there, I'm gonna go find that job. You know what? I don't like being in this career, but that career over there sounds really good, I bet you it's better, right? Or, you know what, uh, my boyfriend or girlfriend, ain't no good, my spouse, my partner, not working out, that person over there, you know what, that's gonna be even better for me. It's not true, okay? The grass is not always green on the other side. You've gotta put some effort into this. There you go, you're just a huge boy. I gotta get some, we're gonna some for that, please. <laughs> it was a risky move. <laughs> Last thing it says is I realize this may be a shock, but I can change the world. And I refuse to believe that I am part of the lost generation. It's the core of the video. You have to believe you can change the world. You do not wake up in the morning and change the world by putting your pants on. That's not how it works. You have to believe you're gonna change the world and you have to reverse it. Remember, you're taking your steps forward. That's easy. You don't piss people off if you keep walking in line. People don't doubt you if you keep going the direction everyone else is going. That's pretty easy. Right? No one's going to say, well, why didn't you stop the tracks and reverse it? Well, the train was going that way. That's where, that's where everyone's going, right? But it's not okay to let that happen. So you have to believe that you can make change, and you can't accept that we're going to be the lost generation that lets this happen. So, so before we watch that video, one last time, there's one other thing that I think is important that maybe if I were to rewrite that, I don't know how I'd fit this sentence in because she's got a lot, a lot smarter with words than me. But there's one piece of the video that I wish it was in there, is if you want to make this reversal happen, you gotta really want it. Like, really want it. Because this stuff is not easy. It's hard. It's important, you gotta do it, but you gotta really want it. You gotta be able to plow through when people are saying the idea is not a good idea. You gotta be able to stick with it when everyone's telling you to give up. The best ideas in any place in society have been people that have had dollars, okay? You gotta really want this. I think that's the one criticism of our generation that I do see sometimes. 
is that we don't want stuff enough. Because we haven't had the sacrifice to the same level that some others have. And because we haven't had to live through that type of sacrifice, I don't know how bad we want stuff. I don't know how bad you want to make that change that you brought to, to this weekend. I don't know how bad you want to be here. I, I don't know how bad you want to even think and talk and work, network with folks about making community change. The folks that I interact with, and I get caught this myself, sometimes I'm more excited about, you know what, uh, watch that machine game tonight, and I really want to watch that machine game, it's going to be fun, it's going to be good. You know what, I, I'm just tired, I got I to gotta go to bed, you know, I, I, need my, I need my eight hours of sleep. I'm not saying not to sleep, but I'm saying at some point, you got to want this stuff really bad if it's going to happen. So let's roll the video one more time as we go through the first time through. Just imagine if that's what ends up happening. And that's where we're going to go, you know, do something about it. And on the second round through, on the, on the reversal, think about what kind of effort and energy and passion and work it's going to take for you. You, not your neighbor, you can't say, this is on my neighbor, I'm going to ride their coattails. What it's going to take you to make sure we create the second half of this, because the second half is not going to come because we watched a cool YouTube video. I was supposed to leave time for questions, I don't think I did. Uh, we can take a couple of questions. If you have a question or two, that's fine. I, um, otherwise, I don't want to be the first speaker sending you off, of course, on the agenda. You can, you'll then be blaming me for missing, missing the Michigan game. <laughs> so, if there's a question or two, we can take one now, and then I'll be around home. Hello, Michigan. Hello, my name is Victoria Bell. I am not a morning person, but I'm going to try to get my question together. Um, are you available for coaching via Skype, Google Hangout, whatever that is? You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I love to help any of you um, get to the solutions that you guys are trying to create. Now, if I have 84 emails tomorrow or phone calls, it might take me just a little bit to respond to them all. But absolutely, this stuff is too important not to be supporting it. And so uh, I'm not here for 15 minutes and walking away saying, do this on your own. If you, I think there's some kind of information maybe somewhere or if they can get it, if they can distribute it. So um, yeah, Skype, Google Hangout, you know, find me on Twitter, Facebook, and all that kind of stuff too. So be happy to help any way I can. Although I will say, I'm one of you guys, so if, if you need a you know a pep talk, I'm pretty good at pep talks, but outside of that, I think the stuff's in you guys that's gonna put this together. I mean, I've got some things that I've got cooking for my own, so you know, I'd be happy to talk through some things, but I probably as good as, for a pep talk as anything. If you start to get down, then you call me, and we'll roll this video, and I got 10 more videos, <laughs> we'll get going again, but, but otherwise, I mean, I'd be happy to, you know, have you talk to him. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jonathan. How do you suppose people uh, start doing this without mobilized out there? Like, there's no yeah. public information for people to actually start a nonprofit or start to change their community, especially when yeah. people don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a great question. I think uh, in the formal structures, we make this too hard, right? The formal structures that are out there, filing for tax status, and you gotta be a 501c3 if you're gonna get a donation and all this kind of stuff. I, I think we took a good thing and we made it too complicated. Uh, my response is, I, don't, I mean, I work in that world, and I don't, that world's not gonna solve these issues. So is it, yeah, eventually if you can form a nonprofit that open you up to more capital and everything else, sure. At the beginning though, just do it. I mean, just walk out and start small. I mean, this does not need to be, you don't need to roll out the, the 10 page prospectus and land a million dollars of venture capital here. It's not what we're talking about, right? I mean, if you have, you know, a plan for what you, something you want to um, engage in, and if it involves people, start with a person, start with a couple people. You know, it would be nice to scale fast. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you can get to that point where we can scale solutions, but there's no good roadmap for this. It's not go to the Chamber of Commerce and I want to start a new business and someone's going to walk me through all this stuff. 
I wish there was. Um, I, I could jump in, Mike. Yeah, but that's why you, you Mola, said outside Mola of Mobile. Mobile has created that roadmap. What's I'm saying? But he said outside of Mobile. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's why you guys are here. So thankfully, you're not in that shoes. But yes, they, they can do all that. Yeah, so Mo Mobilize actually just recently launched an online platform called our Mobilizer's Workbook, and it's a 10 step guide on how to launch a social risk of adventure. Um, and it's on our website. Anyone can join the community, and it outlines the 10 steps you need to take to, to get you there. So we can talk about that more later. But I just want to jump in and say. Absolutely. So you got lucky yeah. that you're at the summit. For people that you know that aren't at the summit, they can still access the website. It's not a members only pay by you go kind of thing. So tell people to go there. Or download it for them and give it to them. And it's um, the purpose of the platform is it for it to be millennial led. So we want to hear what you're working on and best practices you discovered. Um, and it was completely written by millennials as well. So um, I think Mike deserves another round of applause. Thank you, Mike, for joining us, and I think that was definitely worth going over over time because it was a great, um, great video. So I think Dave wanted to say something. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to steal the microphone. Well, on behalf of Mobilize.org, we would like to present this award to you. Oh, um, nice. Another round of applause, please. Mike. Yeah. We're going to hear all of your ideas, and um, we're going to be doing that with uh, two fantastic facilitators we have here. So I'd like to um, introduce and turn it over to Amber Top and Amanda Itliong. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. All right, it's a little better than the first good morning. So everyone's waking up a little bit. Good morning. Um, babies a year, the day after they are born. Very exciting. Um, really, really proud of that work. Um, and I'm sure it connects to a lot of the ideas that you guys are working on, too. So, dialogue is magic. My background, I come to dialogue, I, this is stuff I've academically trained in and have worked in for a long time. Before I moved, I grew up in, grew up in southeastern Michigan, came back two years ago, um, had been teaching out at Stanford University, um, public service leadership, you can read my bio and the program, things like that. But a lot of my work has really been around how do we help especially young people, most of my career has been working with college students, connect to not only how to make change and how to make great change, but ethical and effective service. And what we really want to think about is the way that we get to the most ethical and effective service is by testing out our ideas connecting to other people who have value. All of us have value. And so why dialogue is important, and why this morning is so important, and why the day is gonna be so exciting, and I hope you can really start to feel the energy of this work. I know we're all a little sleepy in the morning, but dialogue is important because you matter. Because you matter, and you matter, and you matter, and you matter, right? Because all of us matter. We heard Phil Cooley last night tell us that, I remember he was, listening to him and he said, you know, we forget about young people here in Detroit. Have you felt that before? Has anybody ever felt that? Raise your hand if you've ever felt. In Detroit, we forget about young people sometimes. Today, amen, right? I'm Gospel Baptist Church is where I grew up, so <laughs> you understand. Um, I, I appreciate, I need a lot as a facilitator too, so if I'm looking at you, you have to smile back. It gives me power. Right. Um, so who's participated in dialogue before? Yeah? Has anybody ever done this wacky keypad stuff before? Oh, this is going to be fun wackiness we're going to do today. Um, what I want you to think about is why dialogue is important, because today is our chance to make sure that young people are heard, to make sure we get remembered. Have you ever felt powerless? Yes. yes. Tell me. Yes. yes. Here in Detroit? Yes. yes. Have you ever felt voiceless? Yes. yes. Here? Yes. In Detroit? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so today is our chance to have our voices heard. And the really cool thing about the style of dialogue we're going to use is that we're going to take everything and we're going to put it into a format and a process that is going to help share it in a really intelligent way with people in power, too. 
So this is a really neat process we're going to be kind of connecting to. Another thing I want you to start to think about before I pass it over to Amber to tell us about the keypads is really that you have project ideas, many of you in this room. Okay? That kind of means you're um, either already a social entrepreneur or you are a burgeoning social entrepreneur, which means that there's some little energy down there in there that you're going to start getting out and sharing with the world. These table conversations and the questions we're talking about are perfect to help you evolve your idea. Great social entrepreneurs are people whose idea, they are sharing it wherever they can. They are listening to every bit of feedback they can get from anybody, especially people who are different than they are, especially across difference, right? It's not about insight, it's about outsight. I kind of made up that word, but <laughs> you can guess what it means, right? <laughs> Fabulous. So we want it. So this matters because stakeholders and civic leaders need to hear what millennials have to say. We also are going to collect the data from today. The way that we do this, it gets collected and a report gets created. You can actually, if you go on mobilize.org's website, you can see reports from past summits and work they've done. And you can see kind of what it looks like. It's incredibly exciting. And Mike just told us. Which we gotta, we gotta believe this in order to do this table dialogue right. The status quo is not good enough. We still all agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. Status quo isn't good enough. That's why this matters. So this matters because this is gonna be really crazy. I need to get you in the moment. Think about this. The wisdom is in the room. Right here, look around you. The answers to these big, tough questions we're going to be talking about, the answers are here. We have to create a space and an environment at our own tables where we're going to be able to get them out. Because one little piece of it is in each of us, and we have to start to connect our ideas to each other, build on each other's ideas to get to that, get to that change. So in a second, we're going to talk about what actual your table process is going to look like, but Amber's going to introduce us first to the keypads. You ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, so everyone's going to get to feel a little bit like you're on a game show this morning, which I think is fantastic if you like game shows. So everyone needs one of those little keypads, little clicker-looking devices on your table. So everyone grab one of those, and you're going to keep that same keypad throughout this entire weekend. So if you, you see that there's a yellow sticker with a number on it, make sure you write that number down, because that's going to be your same keypad throughout this weekend. So it's important to have that. But I just want to tell you a little bit about what is the purpose of having these clickers and how I use them in my work at the Center for Michigan. So if you've never heard of the Center for Michigan before, we are a nonprofit organization based in Ann Arbor, but our work is statewide. And our mission is really to help Michigan residents from across the state have your voices be heard by, by our political leaders. Because I don't know about you, but I often feel as though politics probably everywhere in the nation, but particularly, particularly here in the Michigan is in here in Michigan is really driven by interest groups on, on kind of the extreme ends of the political spectrum as well as single interest groups that are advocating for a certain cause and people like you and I don't always have a voice in that process. So the goal of the Center for Michigan is to go around and find out what people in Michigan think and help advocate for, for the ideas that you have. So we do this in a number of ways, but one of them is through some, some community meetings that we call community conversations. We do these all across the state. Actually, in the past year, I have been everywhere. I've facilitated 104 conversations, many of them right here in the city of Detroit, 23 to be exact, about education here in the state of Michigan. What do we need to do to improve student learning in the state of Michigan? Um, and we use these keypads in those conversations with the goal of letting everyone participate. So when we ask you some questions later this morning and throughout today, as well as tomorrow, you're going to get to vote with that keypad. So those of you who are maybe a little bit more shy, maybe you're right away, you're just not, you're, you don't really like raising your hand and, and shouting it out to the group. It allows everyone to participate at the level that you're most comfortable. Additionally, everyone has an equal voice. Your votes are completely anonymous in this, so you can be as honest as you want with your keypad. 
And the goal, I think, of today is that the process is completely transparent. We want you to, at every step of the way, know what people in the room are thinking. And this will allow us to do that, because when you vote a second later, we'll flip the slide and it'll show exactly how all of you feel about the questions up on that screen. So I think it's going to be, I think it's really fun. It's a little bit nerdy, but everyone gets their keypad out, and, and it's, it'll be fun, I, I promise you. So that's a little bit about how the voting is going to work. I'm going to go over exactly how we're going to do all of this, as well as we'll do some warm-up questions uh, about you in just a moment. But I'm going to hand it back to Amanda, and then we'll get started with that voting. Okay, so small groups. We're in tables. Everybody is sitting at their correct numbered table based on their name tag. Am I right? Yeah? Wonderful. And you actually have a table facilitator at each table. I would love for our table facilitators to raise their hands now. Thank you. Make sure we got one at every table. Yeah? No? You guys don't have one? I don't know where you want to use it. Okay. We will make sure you get taken care of. Don't worry. Thank you for letting us know. We might switch guys around a little bit? Yeah, why don't we, why don't we t combine some of our tables? Four and five? Yeah? Why don't four we get you over to table five? <laughs> That's good! You hear that? What was your name, sir? Mike. Mike said it. He doesn't know those people. Does that make a good dialogue? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Mike, underlining a point for us. Okay, so I want you at your tables. We also are going to need a note taker at every table. So your table facilitator, as you're doing um, introductions, is going to be able to help you get a note taker. So we're going to actually, Amber, can you pass this out? These go to our table facilitators. If you could raise your hand again for our note take, uh, table facilitators, we're giving them to. And then the note takers are going to turn in um, our notes. These notes become really important because it's actually what we vote on with the keypads later. So this is really important. Okay, one little, um, one little very important thing that you're gonna need to know and understand. Um, and I'm gonna ask Eric to be my volunteer, actually. My first volunteer. Um, one of the things, time is very important to dialogue. Okay, time is very important to dialogue. We're going to need to get four questions done today to talk through some things. And so we do are going to have um, a timer up on the screen. But in addition, you're going to listen. You know, did you ever have those stories when you were a little kid that it was like, they were Disney, and it was like, you'll know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes <laughs> ring like this. Okay? Um, this is our signal, not for... I'm going to finish telling you my whole point or my entire life story. This is our signal for actually just finish your sentence and get all eyes up on the front. Okay? Eric, you want to give it a... Describe <laughs> the people now, too, who maybe are the kind of person, okay, are extroverts, back here, back here, um, are introverts and are people who are the kind of person who sits at the table and is listening to everybody and says that brilliant thing that sums it all up <laughs> because they've been so thoughtfully listening. Who are they? I know, you're, I know you're in this room. The quiet person who maybe doesn't talk all the time, but only when it's important and they really have something to say. Okay, okay, we've got them at every table. In this room, we need to challenge our introverts to make sure they have a place at the table to say what's going to be important to them, okay? So that's something important you want to think about at each of your tables. How are we challenging our introverts to step up a little bit and make sure they're sharing and challenging our extroverts to step back a little bit and give people space to talk? Sir, do you have a question? In the middle? Oh, in the middle is great. You're going to just kind of ride it. You're going to have moments where you're going to feel like an extrovert and moments you're going to feel like an introvert. Probably. Just ride it. You're going to be fine. We're not worried about you. We're not worried about you at all. So we've got our table facilitators. We've got our note takers who are going to be really thoughtful about getting us some legible, easy to read notes on your sheet. Okay. We've also got, this is really important everybody, I want you to see this right up front here. This is our little comment question box 
This is right up here on this table up at the front. And this might get to your question a little bit. If you're neither the introvert or the extrovert, but maybe there's something that just didn't get set at your table, or you have a question you want to pose to the entire room, or there's just something important burning that, that you want to make sure gets out there, write it, on, write it on a piece of paper, slip it in the comment box. Okay, this is all about, the whole process of this dialogue is all about pretty immediate feedback and revision. That's what's so exciting about it. So we want to keep making this better. All the people that you've heard talk yesterday and even getting started this morning, this is our chance to really, everybody in the room, be, be the voice. For any dialogue, we want to remember some really important points. We want to encourage everybody's contributions. Okay, there's all sorts of reasons why somebody might not want to share, but we need to create a space at our little table where people feel comfortable. Right? We want to listen to learn. What some, you're, you're, we're not listening to respond. We're listening to learn something. Because everybody's got a really important perspective in this room. We want to seek diverse points of view. And there's plenty of them. We want to look for patterns and themes. You're going to find some. And what's cool is back at table 13, they're going to be talking about the same thing that table 5 is talking about at some point. And that idea through this process is going to rise to the surface. We're going to also build on the ideas of others. Okay? The really exciting thing about this is sometimes, I don't know, I have bad ideas sometimes. Anybody have bad ideas? Yeah. And as an extrovert, I sometimes even share my bad ideas. <laughs> yeah? The beauty of dialogue is that an idea that might be just not quite fully formulated yet is the perfect opportunity for somebody at your table to jump on and finish it, for the next person to talk and evolve that idea. Bad ideas turn into good ideas all the time in dialogue, so don't be scared to say anything. Okay? So create that space at your table. The other really important thing, we want to assume goodwill. Everybody here is here for the right reason. Everybody here, we want to assume, is coming from their own place of knowledge and value and their own passion. So we want to assume that everybody's, just remember that. Because sometimes we're talking about stuff that, you know, this is important, this is passion. So we got to keep working with it. Okay, and to get us, before we start into some of these demographic um, questions with Amber, you got to humor me for a second. Because you humored Mike, so I know you're going to humor me. So I want us to, this is how we're going to get present in the moment, especially when we're tired, especially when um, it's Saturday morning. We need everybody to be really present in order to have a great dialogue. So I want everybody just to take a second, get comfortable in your chair. Just get comfortable. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. And we're going to do a couple of deep breaths. Okay, we're going to do a couple of deep breaths. And deep breaths are amazing because they kind of clean you out, bless you, and they get you into a really great frame of mind. Totally. We're going to do three deep breaths. The first one is actually going to be for yourself because you're going to need it to be, be at your best today. The second one is going to be for everybody else in the room. And when we do that one, you're going to want to feel you everybody else. Saying that percent. country, rock, Latino, or Latino music, house music, or 7%. All right, next question. Which social media platform do you most prefer? You saying that country, rock, Latino, or Latino music, house music, or 7%? Yes. All right, next question. Which social media platform do you most prefer? Receive a day. That's how many you get to your phone. <laughs> How many of you get blown up all day? They say that 18 year olds are Got just a couple more seconds to get your votes in. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, 
So 30%, that's our largest, get 21 to 50 book text per day. You guys are way more popular than me. 25% get one to 10, that's me. 19%, 51 to 100, 16% of you get 100 or more, who are you? 10% get 11 to 20. All right. All right, what is your gender? <laughs> Just get a couple more seconds to get your votes in. Okay, let's see what you have to say. All right. Next, what is your age? <laughs> Reminder again that all of these questions are completely anonymous. They will never be connected with your name or anything identifying about you. Receive a day. So that's how many you get to your phone. <laughs> how many of you get blown up all day? Let's see. They say that 18 year olds are not Got just a couple more seconds to get your votes in. <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay, so 30%, that's our largest, get 21 to 50 book text per day. You guys are way more popular than me. 25% get one to 10, that's me. 19%, 51 to 100, 16% of you get 100 or more, who are you? 10% get 11 to 20. All right. All right, what is your gender? <laughs> Just get a couple more seconds to get your votes in. Okay, let's see what you have to say. All right. Next, what is your age? <laughs> Reminder again that all of these questions are completely anonymous. They will never be connected with your name or anything identifying about you. Yeah? Okay. Whoever's going to also have the question projected up here so you'll be able to see it. Um, and this first question is how we're going to get started. You're going to discuss this at your tables individually. Um, and it's not like a, you don't have to do this as a everybody go around in a circle. This is an actual dialogue. Build off of each other, other's ideas, let it flow, okay? So our first question today is, how can Detroit millennials contribute to the city's revitalization efforts? If you're house up or have a question about, about the process, just wave to us, okay? Note takers, make sure you're writing legibly. Are you ready to get to it? Okay, let's do this, people.
I feel like we capitalize on that and require to make like more seats for the audience and like shape this all to and I feel like it's my expectation to find out if it was your problem or if it was your problem or if it was your problem. I was doing my career and I was just playing with the SPL and the MSA. I really like it. My name is Shabella Matthews and I'm with High Five Initiative. Okay. What obstacles prevent millennials from being successful in Detroit? I think a huge issue or barrier that is preventing millennials from um, coming together and kind of like just up building themselves is like a lack of communication and a lack of resources. Uh, there, there's a huge issue with like people that are like really passionate about like giving back to the community. They just there's really, they feel alone. Because I know a lot of the times in, in my own personal experiences that I just feel like I don't have anybody to reach out to and the people aren't as passionate as me. And I think that a huge uh, bonus of like being a part of the Mobilize.org Summit is that I'm meeting like-minded people. And every time I meet someone, they have like a link or like an email address or con contact information to where it will expand what I know and the and just the general knowledge. Why do you feel it's important for millennials to actively participate in finding solutions and improving your community? It, can you repeat that? <laughs> Why do you feel it is important for millennials to actively participate in finding solutions and improving their communities? It's really important that as millennials that we um, consist consistently talk about the issues simply because every day there's a change in someone's like lifestyle and every day it's a new problem and if we don't continuously talk about this with different people of like from different backgrounds then we'll continue to be closed-minded or absent-minded about about the people who don't speak up or the people who are afraid to to voice their own opinion and if, if we don't start to communicate as a whole or go beyond our own comfort level and start to be afraid or or do things that might um that just make us uncomfortable then we'll continue to live in the status quo and be a part of the norm so it's really important that we we step outside of our own boundaries and our own safety zones and we start to embrace other people because if we if we continue to forget that community as a whole is the most important thing in the world we'll continue to just be a country that that works off of being lucrative and and, and being the number one and we're as a, as a, an american speaking from america we're just not number one anymore because we're forgetting about what's important and that's the people do you think that the millennial generation in particular is going to play an important role in that that uh, recreation that you're talking about i, I think millennials are well, clearly they're the future like we are the right now we're we're like we're making fashion trends like where the music well music's not really a positive right now for the most part but as a whole like everything that anyone from the age of 16 to 35 is really doing is is causing a commotion like um the, what's the guy that named uh created facebook seth uh what's his name or mark mark yeah he is a millionaire and he's our age, you know, he's almost a billionaire and he's our age. So the things that we're doing and, and technology and just just the things, the advances that we are we are coming up with, um, we're gonna, we've already started to take over the world and if people start to understand that um, that education is so key and if you're just a little more knowledgeable about certain things, like it can just fuel you to become a pioneer of whatever it is that you're passionate about. So how has attending the Mobilize.org Summit helped you change how you feel about these obstacles in your community? Um, I think <laughs> the summit, it's changed everything, but not not to the point where like I'm changing my ideas. Um, it's just adding to things that I've kind of already been like going crazy in my head about anyway. It's, it's, it's fueling me, it's making me more passionate, um, it's boosting my energy, like I'm already a hyper person. <laughs> so like this is just like, it's like just, just over, body possessing energy because everyone is just like let's do this let's be this let's embrace it let's spread it it's all positive and if we if everybody realizes that positivity 
whew, it can go like hundreds and billions of miles if, if you just if you learn to embrace it and don't be afraid to spread it like a disease <laughs> Okay, last question. Um, what would you say to millennials who do not feel empowered to create change in their community? Um, as far as people not feeling like they can make the change, we were just talking about this at our group discussion. Um, we need to figure out a better way to reach out to these people. Um, our generation also has this thing about making everything cool. Uh, we do that very easily. Skinny jeans were just not the issue a couple years ago, but now everybody wears them. Um, not to say I agree with it, but <laughs> we have that power. Like, and, and we also have the power to communicate and, and figure out a better way to, um, to talk to people who, who don't feel um, the necessity of, of cleaning their community or, or mentoring children or just doing minor things that can make a difference. I don't really have the best suggestion on how we reach those people, but we have to try at least. We have to go out, like I said, go out of that comfort zone and at least try. Like we have to try to talk to them. And if if they need somebody who looks more like them, send somebody in there that looks more like them. If they need somebody who uses the same lingo, send somebody in that does that. We have to just cater to those people. And I know it seems like, like you know, we're catering to. Can you tell us your name and affiliation? My name is Rochelle Morgan, and I'm a student of Urban and Regional Studies at the University of Michigan Dearborn. What obstacles do you think prevent millennials from being successful in Detroit? Um, I think that there's a lot of people that are um, not aware of the resources that do exist. Um, we've had a lot of cuts to different programs, um, and there's a lot of grant money that is still out there, a lot of resources that are still around. Um, things have just been shifted, and I think that um, a lot of the the uh, steps that it takes to get information or just you know being in the know that's something that a lot of people just don't have they just don't have access to resources they don't know what they don't know as one of my uh, team members said earlier today and that ignorance alone uh, you know stops them from being able to move forward for themselves for them fam for their families for their communities as far as like seeking solutions and why do you think it's important for millennials to actively participate in finding these solutions and improving their communities? Why? Mm -hmm. um, because when other people see people forwardly moving, I mean, positively moving forward, I think it kind of inspires something in them. Um, definitely the younger people, uh, seeing older people, whether it's teenagers or, or young kids, seeing their parents and their parents' friends and um, us as millennials doing something positive, I, I, I think it creates a chain effect, and you can't help but get motivated um, by seeing uh, by seeing activity, positive activity. Uh, just like neg if it's negativity that they see, you know, it, it's promoting it, and you know, it's making it okay. So if millennials get involved and get active, I think it just catch on like wildfire. And how has attending the Mobilize.org Summit helped you change the way you feel about these obstacles in your community? Oh my God. I was so excited when I got the invitation from my Urban and Regional Studies uh, professor um, that I started reading a book called Reimagining Detroit. I'm not in classes this semester. And just reading the book about um, taking all these predisposed ideas and old notions of what a city, what an urban area should look like, um, and doing away with those. Um, and looking at what other cities have done, you know, what their best practices are. Those may not be within North America. They could be in South America or Europe or Africa or Asia, but looking at best practices um, and, you know, seeing how to move forward. With that being said, um, I was so tired yesterday. I worked seven days to get the weekend off to come be a part of this particular conference, and I just was not motivated. But um, things happen throughout the day. And once I got here, um, the energy uh, caught on the panel with uh, the guy from Slows and Pony Ride, you know, was the thing that I walked in on. And uh, there was just so much positive energy in the room. And that alone uh, just really invigorated me and gave me the energy I needed to be alert and to be an active listener. And so far, just listening to other people's ideas and knowing that there are young people out there that are passionate about the city as I am and are tired of dialogue, like I'm tired of dialogue, um, and are ready to actively get in the community and start doing something about it, 
has been an amazing experience that it hasn't even been 24 hours, folks. And it's just, it's doing something in me right now. I told people, I went home, I didn't stay the night. I went home and I told my family, I talked to my friends and we've, you know, discussions are happening outside of Mobilize right now because of what we're doing this weekend. So what does Monday look like for you? So you've had this great summit. What are you gonna take away from it and, and what are you gonna do? Flyers for my community block club. We don't have a block club. We haven't had a block club since the 90s. And just getting a hold of my neighbors and, and letting them know, hey, you know, we can start right here, right now with um, making things better for us in our immediate community and, and just hoping that it can catch on from block to block to block. And uh, just hopefully, you know, letting the movement encompass the whole city, which can ultimately lead to worldwide change, hopefully. And what would you say to millennials who do not feel they are empowered or can create change in their community? Oh, that you can most definitely create change. You have to be about change. You have to see, you have to know what it is that you want to change, first of all. You have to recognize what it is that's that you do not stand for. Then you have to recognize what you do stand for. Then you gotta make, be vocal about that and find other people who are vocal about it and be on the hunt, be on the mad hunt for resources and like-minded individuals and hook up with those type of people and keep that positive energy going. That, that's the only way. You gotta keep that positive energy going with actions as well as words. There's gotta be some 